Ireland. And here with us, with us now, live in the studio, Casper Mayor Ray Pacheco. Thank you so much for coming in today. Good morning. It's been a little while. Yeah, it has been. It's been about a month since yeah. we've mm. talked to you, so we had a holiday in there. But it's know. good to be back. Yes, it's good to have you, too. Let's A couple of things we wanted to talk about. The Casper City Council recently passed a school safety resolution. Can you tell us what that was and what that actually means? Sure. <clears throat> well, you know, a, a resolution is a opportunity, to obviously, to... Um, have that conversation of um, support, a statement of support, um, as we did the LGBT um, uh, PFLAG resolution just not too long ago. So it's an opportunity to make a statement of support. So that statement that was really said about it is that we are supporting um, and continuing to support uh, school safety and safety of all our kids. And we ha really have that collaboration with all the uh, stakeholders in the community. Okay. And uh, one of the writings I saw it described it as declares council members will play an active role in confronting school violence. Yeah. You know, I mean, and I think part of that in, when we say an active role, I think that it has to be um, us having that collaboration um, and talking with the school district, talking with those stakeholders, but also how can we um, work with the, the Casper Police Department um, and how can we work with that to continue to keep our kids safe um, in the schools? Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you go ahead, Roger. Oh no, I, I was going to move on to the uh, what? What is the current um, uh, form and 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 details? Uh, at least as it stands right now on the, on the whole food truck thing. Ah, good question. Well, <laughs> it's been a bit of a. Um, uh, evolution, I suppose. Yeah, you yeah. know, just to that's be, an understatement. Yeah, yeah, to be a to be quite frank, and um, we did a couple weeks ago. We did our um, um, amendments on the fly when we were there, mm -hmm. and so that was what, what transpired with with the the food trucks, and and of course um, there were some people that were very happy with that, and some people were were not happy with some of those amendments. We are going into our second reading next Tuesday, uh -huh. um, which I, I can say that I think that there will probably be more amendments, Roger. I'll just be frank with you. Yeah. Um, that could come up uh, depending upon what happens. I know that there will be some brick and mortar uh, businesses downtown that are going to want to speak um, that have already put their names in to speak about it. Um, so uh, to be able to talk about the evolution of it at this point, it's going to continue, I think. Um, I'm hoping that at some point we find some compromise that's going to focus in on helping both sides um, to be able to continue the growth of the downtown um, and also be able to support our brick and mortars, but also support our uh, food trucks. Now, as it stands right now, uh, uh, the, the regulations, the, 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 the tough regulations will be in place pretty much from on 2nd Street from David to Durban. Is that where we? Correct. Right. So the, basically the way we define the core of the downtown is where the regulations would be. Everything yeah. outside of that. Uh, would not really be um, re a regulatory um, uh, process for that. Um, so that's really kind of the only real big piece of reg regulation that we're going to see. Okay. okay. And, and most, and I obviously haven't spoken to all of them, but the, the food truck vendors that I have spoken to had praise for the city council for, you know, getting into this process and working on the amendments and working so hard because it wasn't, it wasn't an easy thing that night, you know, to do those amendments on the fly. No, and that's, and that's what legislation is. And you don't see that often at city council. Um, I know there were a couple of council members that wanted us to table it, um, to go back and to be able to do that. But I think part of it is, is that it's an opportunity for us to have that conversation and, and again, um, probably to seek more amendments uh, and to move that forward. I think this is going to be an evolutionary thing that, that we try to get it right. And I, th I think ultimately we have to remember that we're not going to make every single person happy. And we have to come to an understanding that there has to be a level of compromise on both sides. Okay. You had an opportunity to speak at the meth conference here that took place I did, yeah. I spoke days. yesterday at the 15th annual uh, uh, meth conference, which was held down at the Ram Coda. Um, and it really kind of gives an opportunity, not only just about dealing with meth, but also talking about any type of substance abuse um, issues that affect communities in the state of Wyoming, um, in particular in Casper. Um, my background has, has been um, substance abuse prevention and yes. social work. And, and so part of that being uh, an opportunity, um, I have a place in my heart where we continue to work in our communities uh, to do that. And the meth conference gives us that opportunity, I believe, uh, for us to say, you know, we do have issues. Uh, not only do we have opiate um, issues and heroin issues and uh, meth issues in the community, um, all the way to marijuana, we have to figure out a way to work together and collaborate um, to come up with some answers uh, how to how to combat that. When the math conference started 15 years ago, it was really specifically targeted at the math problem. But as you say, that has evolved over the years as well. It has because I think you know as you 
probably know, I mean, obviously with, with substance abuse issues, it, it ebbs and flows depending upon what's going on around the country. So I think with that being said, we look at it and we say, okay, well, how, how can we evolve that? And I think the Meth Conference continues to evolve to be able to bring that communication, that collaboration, that dialogue um, for other uh, communities around the state um, to work together. And so it's just not about meth, but it's about other types of substance abuse, uh, really all substance abuse issues that face our communities. So what is your feeling, you know, personally about the, the substance abuse problem in the Casper area in Natrona County? Have, are we seeing more? Are we seeing less? I mean, as you say, it's an ebb and flow. You know, I think it also depends upon the economy. I think it depends upon a lot of the things that, that transpire with it. But, um, you know, I, I think the health department has had a, a good feel of that you are seeing that there are spikes in certain areas. Um, uh, you're, you probably have seen nationally the spike of opiate um, addiction yes. that's taking place with painkillers, et cetera. Um, so I think that that's continuing uh, to, to do that. Now, not being a professional in that area, um, I think there are levels that we're seeing, and I think there's a little bit of a resurgence in meth uh, use again. Uh, so you're seeing those types of things happen. Um, but I think uh, overall, um, it's that dirty little secret that's, that we try to push to the side. But where we bring it in, like the meth conference, to bring it out into the open and um, into the light to say, okay, we have issues, and how do we work together uh, to solve that problem? Well, there are so many other issues that are intertwined with that substance abuse issue as well. And, you know, the, the Suicide Prevention Task Force talks often about how, you know, addiction and substance abuse play such a big role in the suicide rate. Oh, it, absolutely. And and a big part of the, the when we look at those issues, when it comes to both substance abuse and suicide um, uh, prevalence uh, is a huge correlation to that. And so we've got a multifaceted issues that we're facing um, a lot of that. And I think uh, the meth conference um, and things like this give us that opportunity um, not to say, well, that's somebody else's problem. Frankly, it's all everybody's problem and we have to work together in order for us to solve it. Are we going to create solve it tomorrow? No, I think it's an ongoing dialogue that needs to continue to happen. Okay. You know, on a lighter note, Ray, I, I, I guess it's kind of encouraging that you had so many people vying for the open uh, uh, council seat. Yes, it was. A lot of it, folks wanted to get involved. It was great. I think we had 12 or 13 yeah. um, that ended up coming out. I think one um, was out just outside the boundary, so I think we ended up with 12. Uh, so that was great um, to have that uh, process. And so the process worked. And um, as you probably know, uh, uh, former judge Mike Huber mm -hmm. um, uh, was selected. And um, we really think the world of him. And I think he's going to do a really nice job. Um, he's already proven he knows his stuff. He studies. He knows it. And so uh, Mike has uh, been great so far the last couple meetings. Okay. An mm -hmm. Another question. As long as we have you here, we're just going to pepper Absolute. you with all kinds of stuff. Go right ahead. I, I know that one of your uh, uh, great things that you've been working on is transparency and communication with the council. So you want to tell us how that's going? I know that you have a Facebook page now. Yeah. Not Ray's Facebook page. It's City Council Facebook page. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I think it, for me it's a, and it's funny because it's it's an ebb and a flow. And the part of it is that because you keep the balance, because not a lot of people know, but the mayor uh, also holds a full-time job. Yeah. And so, yes. Mm -hmm. And so you balance, you balance. You not mean you're not getting rich at this? <laughs> exactly yes and so wow so the mayor's position is not a full-time position quote unquote but um, and so to balance to be able to do that is is always a difficult time to be able to see okay how can I balance my, my job and 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 also balance being mayor but within that context um, I'm working on making sure that people know that they can uh, that our conversations are, are open on both on Facebook but also on social media but that we're having that um, uh, can call and can talk to me personally um, to be able to have those issues. Uh, I try to do a 24-hour period turnaround and phone calls. Uh, sometimes it, learn, turns, <laughs> it turns into 48 hours and sometimes maybe three or four days, but um, be able to do that. But that, that constant uh, evolution of talking and, and communicating uh, that dialogue um, to the community is so vital and so important. And, and besides the social media, you know, and all of that, there's the good old fashioned, as you say, you can pick up the phone and leave a message. There's email. You can email the council members. So absolutely continue to do that. Um, I, I've and I've always stated this. I said Councilman Morgan does probably the best job of, of, of really being um, communicating with with uh, his constituency and the public. So he does a really nice job with that. And we can always learn from that type of stuff. And so those are important. But yes, be able to do that. Um, and getting out in the public is something that's important to me and talking to people. And I may not have always all the answers, but to be able to have that conversation. Okay, very good. Casper Mayor Ray Pacheco, thank you so much for coming in and talking with us today. Enjoy the rest of your day. Amen to that. Thank you. Have a great weekend, guys. <laughs> okay, you too. Bye.